book people of the world, it's Wednesday. Let me show you what comic books I got this week. First up is X-Men Gold, issue number 10, The Return of Omega Red. They don't technically fight him in this issue, but they do fight up to the point of getting to him. He's always been a really lethal villain before in the past, but in the past, I never really recalled his tentacles actually piercing the skins of his victims. Maybe he did it and I just never paid attention to it before, but damn, he really does go all out. And I swear the artist is purposely making this as phallic as possible by making this tentacle look like it's about to go into Ileana's mouth. Action Comics number 986, Superman versus Lex Luthor, or Superman Luthor. The Mechanist has taken over a lot of different technology, including Lex Luthor's tech. And it's kind of sort of like Lex is being controlled, but not really. The story was okay, but really this is just opening the door for the big story, which is going to be the identity of Mr. Oz. Everyone has theories on that, but I'm really curious as to how DC is going to handle it. Batman Beyond issue number 11, Damian Wayne versus Terry McGinnis round 2. Damian has taken over the role of Ra's al Ghul, and you'd think he's an evil character, but he shows his true colors in this issue, which I am much happier about, but still I'm not a big fan of Damien, so hopefully he doesn't show up too often in this book. Ben Riley, Scarlet Spider, issue number six, The Return of Marlo Jones, which honestly I didn't know she was missing, but I didn't think she'd been written about too often. She's the wife to Rick Jones. She obviously has something else that's going on. The main story, though, with Kane, it looks as though he's a bit upset because he let Ben Riley live with the whole aspect of him saving a little girl's life, but unfortunately there is no happy ending for that. And damn, Ben's morals have been totally thrown out. He doesn't mind killing at all. Detective Comics number 963, The Return of Anarchy and Spoiler. Although technically, this is somewhat like the introduction to Anarchy in the New 52 universe. Although not really, he's actually been incorporated in before in the past. I'm only reading this really just because it's like a prelude before Tim Drake returns back. In the very beginning, we even get a flashback where Stephanie and Tim are together. I'm more interested in the Clayface story. I really don't want him to turn back into a bad guy yet. But they are hinting that this is a possibility that could happen. Edge of Venomverse, issue number five. This time we're spotlighting Deadpool when he gets a symbiote costume in an alternate universe. And this definitely is a Deadpool symbiote issue. It's a story about him fighting prehistoric shark tapeworms. It turns into like a really gross thing, but I wouldn't expect anything else with Deadpool. The Flash, issue number 29. Barry Allen is still suffering from the consequences of absorbing the powers of the negative speed force. And unfortunately, it caused the death of some villains and some henchmen. He's afraid to use his abilities because he's not really quite sure what's going to be happening with him. So it's just causing all kinds of different problems for him to adjust. Shirtless Bear Fighter issue number three. Turns out that the Shirtless Bear Fighter loses his powers if he has a shirt put on. He's tied up with toilet paper, which I find hilarious. We get a bit more of his backstory where we find out that he was raised by bears, but he's also dead set against certain bears, including his bear brother who did something pretty horrific to him in his past. If you want a good laugh, but still want to see like a really fun story, this is it. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers issue number 18. This is a Finster story. Let me remind everyone out there, this comic book series is much different from the TV show. This is much more adult. In this case, Finster is much more evil. Besides creating monsters and putties, he also creates human putties. It's actually pretty darn dark. Finally, I read Generations, The Unworthy Thor and The Mighty Thor, issue number one. Like all the past generation stories, we have a current superhero going into the past, meeting their counterpart from that time era. In this instance, we have Jane Foster Thor going into the past, meeting up with the Odin and Thor, and they team up together and take on Apocalypse. I thought it was a pretty good story, and I really liked the whole idea of having two Thors versus Apocalypse. Although one of the major things that I think I liked more about this than anything else is the fact we find out that Odin hooked up with Phoenix, or at least the Phoenix Entity. I thought that was really cool. But that's my comic load for this week. I also read Iceman issue number four, and I also read Nightwing the New Order issue number one, but I'll talk about both of those in separate videos. What did you guys get? Leave comments down below and let me know. That's it for this week. Thank you guys for watching me in this video. If you haven't done it yet, check out my Patreon site, patreon.com slash geek. You become one of my patrons, you get to see some extra pictures, videos, photo shoots that I only show to patrons. Check it out, I'd really appreciate it. And with that, I'll join you guys for another video very soon. Peace, love, and I'll stand. I'll see you guys later. There are a lot of different characters in the Marvel Universe that I feel as though should be meeting up at some point just to duke it out. I've always wanted to see Apocalypse take on Thanos. I'm pretty sure Thanos could take out Apocalypse, but still, just the whole idea and the battle between them could be epic.